Welcome to another advanced Unity game development tutorial. Today we are going to use ShaderCraft to create a simple terrain blending material, which allows us to hide the seams in the world a little bit and also to make the environment look a little bit more natural. First we are going to create a new shader under Create, ShaderCraft, Universal Rendering Pipeline, Lit ShaderCraft. And we're going to call it Terrain Blending Shader. Now double click to open Shader Graph. First we're going to create a base shader, the lit part of the shader. So we are creating a new category, call it lit. Then we're adding a new floating point, call it metallic. Then we need another one, call it smoothness. And we need a albedo texture. And we also need a normal map. And in addition to that, we need another float for the normal strength. Now we just need to wire these things up. So we drag and drop the smoothness here, metallic here, then the albedo texture. We make a sample texture node and drag this here and the color to the base color. Then we create another one, another sample texture for the normal map, type normal map and drag the normal map into here. Then we need a normal strength node and drag the normal strength here, wire it like this and then to the normal. Now let's add everything to a group and call it lit. And then we are going to change the default mode to slider here, here as well. And that's the base shader done. Now we go to the rock material and change it to our drain blending shader and then we fill in these values. All right, so the next step is to get the heights of the terrain into the shader. So what we actually want is a texture that represents the heights and Unity already developed an asset that allows us to do this and you can find it in the package manager under terrain tools. So please install this package. Afterwards, you can find the terrain toolbox and under Terrain Utilities, you can find a way to export a height map as a PNG. So internally, Unity uses 16 bits to represent the heights of a terrain. When you export the texture, it is therefore important to disable the compression so you don't get artifacts. Back in Shader Graph, let's create a new position node and set it to Absolute World. The basic idea is to get the X and Z component of this node and look up the height of the terrain using our texture. However, we do not know the size, the height and the offset of the terrain. So after creating a new category, we call terrain, we add a new vector 4 and call it terrain size offset. We also need a new float for the terrain height and we also need our texture we created before, terrain height map. You can then enter all the correct values here and you can find them under terrain and terrain settings here. In a bigger game with multiple terrains or hundreds of materials that use terrain blending, you would automate this process of entering these values. We now have to transform our X and Z coordinates to UV coordinates for the height map. First, we are splitting up all values into their components. Then we get the X component into a vector 2 and the Z component, which is blue here, also into the Y value of this vector 2. These are our X and Z coordinates. Then we separate the size into a vector 2 
like so, and the offset as well. Then we create a subtract node and subtract the offset from the x and c world coordinates to get the relative terrain position. Then we create a divide node and divide the relative terrain position by the size of the terrain to get values between 0 and 1. Now we can finally sample our terrain height map. The values are between 0 and 1, which is why we have to multiply them first. Now we take all these nodes and add them to a new group and call it Terrain. Now we get to the blending part of the shader. First we want to get our Y coordinates and subtract the terrain height of it. This value here now represents how high a vertex is above the terrain. We want to define a range now on where we start and where we end to show our blending texture. So we add a smooth step node. As this is the blending part, we now create a new category and call it blending. And we want to be able to define a distance on how far we want to blend. And so we need a new float and call it blend distance. We want the distances that are greater than the blend distance to be zero and the ones that are lower to be above zero. So we add this to the edge one and set this to zero. Just a few notes more, I promise. Let's get the music starting again. So because we are blending two textures together, we want to have this value here two times, once in the positive and once in the negative. So we add a one minus note here. Now we want to sample our grass texture. So let's add a new texture and call it blend texture. We don't want to use the same UVs as the object uses because this would look very random. So what we do instead is to create a tri planner node. We then add in the blend texture and also add a new float for the tiling and call it blend tiling and plug it in like so. Now we multiply our grass texture by our blend factor and we multiply our original texture by the negative blend factor or by the negated blend factor. As our last step we add these two values together and plug them into the base color. Now that we have the shader and we set some values here, we can see it is starting to work and it looks actually quite nice already. But um, we have some issues with the normals here which we should fix. So a quick solution is to just multiply the normal strength with our blending factor. And so at the bottom, at the start of the blending, the normals are all have all the strength of zero. So that looks already a lot better. Uh, what we can also do is to add a little bit of noise to this line here to make it look a little bit nicer. Let's add two more floats, one for the blend noise scale and one for the blend noise strength. Add a simple noise node and connect the scale like this and then multiply the noise with our strength. Then we simply add this noise to our blend distance. So yeah, this is a basic terrain blending shader. There are of course some problems with the shader we haven't addressed yet. Um, the first one is the normal blending between the terrain and the mesh, which can only be fixed if you use uh, two passes. 
And the other issue is uh, we only use one texture for now for blending, but if you have a larger terrain with different textures, then you might want to uh, plug in the splat map of the terrain as well and decide which texture to blend. As always, thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a follow, but most importantly, leave money on my bank account by buying one of my Unity assets. You can find the link to the store plus a link to this project in the description. Bye.